Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to Sad Podcast here on YouTube. Got a comic magazine. Back in the day. Pre-Wizard, you know. Before the comic boom in the 90s. Comic magazines, you had, you know, comic scene. There was, what, comics value monthly. But the big two, my, my two absolute favorites... Even though one of them I got back then and one of them I didn't was Amazing Heroes, which I picked up every once in a while. I find the comic shop and grab the cover from and then Comics Interview. I never picked up Comics Interview back then. I don't know why. And I started picking up. I did not start picking up Comics Interview until probably about 94, 95. There was somebody being interviewed and I was like, oh, I want to read that interview. I grabbed the issue and I fell in love. And now anytime I find old issues and I got to pay a fortune for them, I grab because there's so much good, and they have a lot of this up on their website for free. And then the guy like you can pay because I don't don't think it gets published anymore. This is fanographic, and this was like okay, Maze and Heroes was their thing they covered. You know, superhero books. You know, your mainstream comics. Have. Comics Journal was a magazine of news and criticism. They covered like stuff. Like, look, just look at this cover. Okay, Gary Groth on Robocop Two, Carl Schultz on V for Vendetta, Erotic Comics, Mexican cartoonist Ruiz interview. Creator rights. What are the creator rights? Discussion with Steve Bissett and Scott McCloud. The cheapening of the comics by Bill Watterson. Ownership panel. Industry professionals debate corporate versus creative ownership. Well, this is... I got this in from my comic shop. It's part of a birthday present. Great looking cover. And I recognize that art. Oh, it's a Scott McCloud and Steve Bissett. Then. Okay. I've And of course, you're always going to get a lot of ads for photographic stuff. This came out September of 1990. Wow, so strip mine alternative. Tell me how a lot of the um, great comic creators have quit making alternative comics so they can make, they earn enough money and they're going and working for, you know, Marvel and DC doing stuff. Like Ty Templeton is doing Elongated Man. Robo Schlock 2, brought to you by Orion Consumer Products. Gary Groff going off on Robocop. Robocop 2, and I admit it's not the best Robocop. I mean, it's not nearly as good as the first one, but it's not as bad as 3 or anything that's come after that. I mean, there's what, 2 or 3 of those made for TV movies. There's that remake. I remember going and seeing 2 in a theater when it came out and realizing this film just feels really like there's a whole subplot of him kind of remembering his family and wanting to go visit him, and it's just dropped like halfway through the movie. And you're like, what happened? Yeah, you could tell something's up. Newswatch, Kamiko sold. Kamiko, the comic company, currently under Chapter 11 protection for creditors and the process of being bought by Chicago businessman Andrew Reb. The purchase may give Kamiko a chance to pay off its old debts while it reorganizes. Yeah, Kamiko was going under. Bissett leaves Clive Barker. Adaptation. Steve Bissett's policy of not accepting work for hires, discussing interviews, and issues led to some tough choices. In 1988, Bissett offered to finance a comics version of Clive Barker's story, Rawhead Rex, whose rights have been the option by Steve Niles, Arcane Comics, Bissett and Mike Zuli, Kuma Blues, and also he did a really good run on, he did some good stuff on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He didn't work on character designs, layouts for the adaptation, adaptation plan for Taboos, issues 6 and 7, have put them aside as Bissett finished finish his commitments to Fontico's Night of Living Dead. Even after Niles' option with Barker expired, Bissett and Zuli continued to work on an adaptation when an option or contract is time allowed. This ended when Eclipse, which has published other Barker stories, picked up the rights to Rawhead and announced its own adaptation. Niles agreed to supervise the project on Eclipse's half. When National Lampoon got balled up. Central com Comics increased, so do the charges. And about the comic shops are getting raided and obscenity laws. Who created Roger Rabbit? I like that. From the, it's got to be from an underground. Rival books of public domain comic strips. Crazy Cat and all this stuff. Introduction to copyrights. Terry and the Pirates. 1990 Comics Award. Eisner's are canceled. 1990 Will Eisner Comics Industry Awards canceled on the June 19th following several mix up in the balloting process while Malibu Graphics publisher Dave Ulbrich who had administered Eisner since their inception in the 1980s resigned from the awards program. The third annual Eisner will be awarded at the San Diego Comic Book Convention in August. 
Initial nominating ballots sent out this spring to editors, publishers, and distributors, and just distributing warehouse managers were recalled by Old Brock on May 18th after Catalan Communications, Bernard Metz, and other recipients noted Old Brock a mistake in it. Several of the magazines and stories listed on the first file had not been published during the year of eligibility. Okay, Harvey's announced. Arkham leads the British, British Awards. Publications, reprints, current cartoons, editorial cartoons. Novel explores comics world. I'll make this not super super long. Eastman, oh, this is good. Eastman begins a new company. Kevin Eastman, co founder of Mirage Studios and co creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, has started a new publishing company, Tundra. The line formed without longtime partner Peter Lair with a debut with new works by well known creators. The first Tundra product is Brat Pack, former Swamp Thing writer artist Rick Beach's realistic examination of superhero sidekicks. According to Tundra, Policy. Beach's characters are drawn against a background describing the bleak wages of vigilanteism, not only upon a community, but upon those who choose to don a mask and take the law in their own hands. Records for Marvel and Dark Horse. Let's see what's Dark Horse record. Dark Horse is Alien vs. Predator number one, combining creatures from the 220th Century Fox movie series, chalked up a U.S. Independence comic record at 350,000 orders. Wow. All the comic news, a case of, a case of plagiarism. Who who's this Ruiz? Blood and Thunder. This is their letter page. It's right after the Kirby interview, where he went the fuck off on Stan Lee. Funny book roulette. Oh, this is the movies. Okay, Dick Tracy, Roller Coaster Rabbit. That's a Roger Rabbit. Uh, short. Oh, uh, greatest Golden Age stories ever told. Yeah, Secret of San Salvador. Don't care. Wendell. Don't care. The Simpsons. Great Expectations. Moby Dick. Tom Story. Dark Chocolate. Mr. Hyde. And Ron the Ancient Mariner. From various various classics illustrated. That's kind of cool. Right through here. Beyond Tombs and Gargoyles, Taboo number three was coming out this time. Taboo is the Steve Bissett run and published basically as a horror anthology. Uh, if you know From Hell by Alan Moore, it came out of there. Lost Girls came out of there. Throat Sprockets. I'm trying to get some other stuff. There's some other stuff. And it's one of those where it's eight. It's a bitch to find issues for these I don't think there is any kind of trade. At all, which I don't know why that's not happened. I'm surprised this C Bus has not done that. But the issues are gonna run you a decent amount to get them in, in decent shape. The Turk the Rich Kreiner reviews the cartoon guide to US history for beginners books. Okay. That's a neat illustration. Well, it just caught my eye. In the New Dark Ages, Carter Shots on V for Vendetta. So it's nice one. Is, is V for Vendetta finished by this time? I'm guessing so. I know it got started in Warrior, but then you know it came over to DC to finish up. And it's not Vertigo. It never really was. Creator rights like that. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> Register for copyright for his eyes. And that's a long interview. With the Bill of Rights for Comics Creators. The right to... Number one, the right to full ownership of what we fully create. Number two, the right to full control of the creative execution of which we fully own. Number three, the right of approval over the reproduction and format of our creative property. Number four, the right of approval over the methods by which our creative property is distributed. Number five, the right to free movement of ourselves and our creative property to and from publishers. Number six, the right to employ legal counsel in any and all business transactions. Number seven, the right to refuse a proposal to more than one publisher, to offer a proposal to more than one offer publisher at a time. Eight, the right to, uh, to prompt payment of a fair and equitable share of profits derived from all of our creative works. Nine, the right to full and accurate accounting of any and all income and disbursements relative to our work. Number 10, the right to prompt the complete return of our artwork in its original condition. Number 11, the right to full control of the licensing of our creative property. Number 12, the right to promote and the right of approval over any and all promotion of ourselves and our creative property. Great illustration. 
Oh, we got Superman, Swamp Thing, American Flag, Ruben Flag, Sarah Bussin, Uncle Street. We got Gary Groff, Scott McCloud, Steve Bissett. The one. Uh, Jaime Hernandez character from Love and Rockets. That's what the. That's the old witch, but it looks like, yeah, it's Bernie Wrightson. Of course, there's Taboo. I'm the cat dancer. I think they would have these nice long interviews. There's a great issue of a comics, uh, comics journal that's right after um, the final issue of Hate was published. Well, the final regular issue, issue 30. And it's just pewter bags sitting down talking all kinds of shit. It's amazing. I don't have a copy anymore. I had one. I lost one. The cheapening of comics. A speech by Bill Watterson derived at the Festival of Cartoon Art, Ohio State University, October 27, 1988. And Bill Waters, if you don't know, Calvin and Hobbes. Cartoon, a reply to Bill Waters in my Mort Walker cartoon is live on Mort Walker was what Beetle Bailey and I think that's it. Creator versus corporate ownership, an industry panel sponsored by the Toronto Comic and Sequential Art Exposition. The Hellraiser book. That was a great book. I don't think they've ever reprinted even half of that. I think a good chunk of that's never been reprinted. What the fuck is that? Varney the First Vampires by Steve Bissett. That's a nice piece of work. Oh shit. Oh shit. Rawhead number three. Steve Bissett artwork. Oh man. Oh shit. Look at this. I guess this is from that Rawhead Rex thing. Him and um, Zuli were working on that didn't come out. There's the old issues. Alan Moore interview. And that's it. And back hey, new graphic novels. Anything think Torpedo wouldn't mind getting. That's really it. I had Blueberry probably on Blueberry. Yeah, Comics Journal. Alright, hope y'all enjoyed that. Maybe if you did, give me that thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, all the other bullshit. And that's issue, sorry, that's issue 137. Later.